escape. Douglas had taken the midnight goods to a station on the other railway, where only diesels work now. He was shunting, ready for his return journey, when he heard a faint shh. That sounds like an engine, he thought. The hiss came again. This time it sounded almost despairing. Who's there? he asked. A whisper came. Are you a fat controller's engine? Aye, and proud of it. Thank goodness. I'm Oliver. We're escaping to your railway, but we've run out of coal and I've no more steam. Is it from scrap you're escaping? Yes. Then it's glad I'll be to help you. But we mun work fast. Both crews joined in. They took off Oliver's side rods, wrote out transit labels, and chalked scrap everywhere they could. Douglas marshalled Oliver in front of his train. No time to turn around, he panted. I mun run tender fast. Come in! Yoo-hoo! Yoo-hoo! yelled a passing diesel. A steamer's escaping! Yoo-hoo! Douglas puffed firmly on. Take me notice, he counselled, but they were stopped before they could clear the station throat. The foreman's lamp shone on Oliver. Aha, he exclaimed. A great western engine, his light flickered further back. A western auto coach and a brake van too. You can't take these. Can we no? said Douglas's driver. They're all for us. See for yourself. Douglas's guard showed him the labels and papers. Oliver's crew hiding in the coach, hardly dared to breathe. Hmm, seems in order, said the foreman grudgingly. But it's queer. Sure and it is, began the guard. But I could tell you queerer. So could I, interrupted the foreman. Right away, guard. Whew, a near thing, puffed Douglas with relief. We've had worse, smiled Oliver. We ran at night. Friendly signalmen would pass us from box to box when no trains were about. We got on well till Control heard about a mystery train. Then they tried to hunt us down. What did ye do? A signalman let us hide in an old quarry branch. Driver, fireman and guard blocked the cutting with rubbish and levered one of the approach rails away. We stayed there for days with diesels baying and growling like hounds outside. I was very frightened then. Small blame to you, said Douglas feelingly. Presently they rumbled over the bridge and on to the fat controller's railway. We are home. They cannot catch you new. Tell Isabel and Toad, please. Douglas called out the news and heard a joyful ting-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling. Ting-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling. He was surprised. Oliver chuckled. <laughs> That's Isabel, he said. There is a bell on her, you see. She's clever. When we go out together, I pull one way and push the other. When I pull, I can see ahead. When I push, I can't. So Isabel keeps a good lookout and rings her bell to talk to me. Get dinner, say. Douglas was impressed. About this toad, he continued. Is he all you wished? said his driver. Yon's the works. We must slip in unbeknownst and find a place for Oliver. Douglas tried hard to be quiet, but the night foreman heard them and had to be told their secret. I know just the place, he said, and showed them an empty siding nicely hidden away. Oliver said, Goodbye and thank you, and Douglas puffed away. Yon's an enterprising engine, he thought. I won away here with Donald, but I'd have been feared to do it on me own. <laughs>